Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and a while back I decided to make a video on the black swan images, which attracted a whole lot of flat earthers to the comment section who tried to defend the black swan, including Nathan Oakley. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to make a video about all the comments. So I did. And Nathan Oakley responded. Now when it comes to the video that Nathan made, I don't really need to respond to it, but there is a reason why I am. Nathan made himself look even more ridiculous than either me or Conspiracy Cats could. So I decided to respond to it because a lot of people in my audience probably haven't seen Nathan's video and probably don't want to give him their watch time. Also, I do have a few responses because Nathan decided to dodge some points that I made like he was Neo from the Matrix. So let's get into it. Refracted shout outs to Planner Walk and Conspiracy Cats for debunking the very needed physical geometry of their heliocentric sphere religion. Oh, he thinks that the globe has been debunked. How cute. Hello, it's me, Nathan Hokey Cokey Jokely, and I think everybody knows that what I'm about to write, even I don't understand. You ready? Horizon is refracted using terrestrial refraction and the geometric R value in 7 over 6R. It's not geometric, as in required by your geometric model. Yep, even I didn't understand that. Conspiracy Cats here demonstrating his inability to read, paraphrasing. I'll assume his paraphrasing is his inability to understand what's being said. It's fairly straightforward. And here we have a classic example of Nathan's inability to understand jokes. Let me help you out here, Nathan. Conspiracy Cats was implying that you had an inability to read or even understand what you had said in your own comments. Your inability to understand this, especially when Conspiracy Cats right at the start said this. Hello, it's me, Nathan Hokey Cokey Jokely. Just proves Conspiracy Cats' point. So, Nathan. Let me explain this very simply. All light can be refracted. Your model is physical and geometric. This is the basis of your religion, that you live on a physical sphere with geometry. If the light's being refracted, you're not dealing in physical geometry. So that's kind of a straw man, isn't it? Because no one's claiming that we see physical geometry. We only ever see light. Now that light may be reflected of physical geometry, but it's still subject to things like refraction. And to claim that there is no physical geometry because light is refracted is absolutely absurd. And we're going to get back to that because there's something that you didn't address, Nathan. And I really wish you had of. We see light. We do not see geometry. Therefore, the horizon that we see is one based on light which can be refracted. The basis of your religion, however, is based in physical geometry. And if the horizon we see is refracted light, it's not physical and geometric. As detailed in the comments you're critiquing, you require a physical geometric horizon. And according to you, you don't have one. Congratulations, Nathan. You actually managed to make it to the end of that sentence. I was worried that some of the words might be a little bit too big for you, but you took your time. You know, you didn't rush things and you got to the end of the sentence. I'm proud of you. So now to address Nathan's actual point. And Nathan, if I'm going too fast or I'm using too many big words, remember you can always slow the video down. You can actually go down to 0.25 speed. That's the last speed though. And yes, I do understand what Nathan was trying to do. I was just making a few jokes about it at Nathan's expense. So Nathan said that I claim that there is no physical geometric horizon. I did not say that. All I say is that the horizon that we see due to light can be refracted, so it's not necessarily tied to the physical geometric horizon. Now there are people that will use things that aren't as influenced as much by refraction as light, and they'll use that to measure things like where the horizon is. Yeah, you do, you fundy religious zealot. You assert physical geometry based on a radius value, giving you a geometric sphere edge 
for a horizon. Wow, what a dodge by Nathan Oakley. It's like we're playing soccer and he thinks that we're playing dodgeball. Uh, you're playing the wrong game, mate. But there is still a chance that he might address it. Leave your votes now. Will Nathan address the point that I made or will he dodge again? Maybe Flat Earthers should try that. I know they won't though because they refrain from doing anything that can't be done with a P1000. Yeah, plan a walk. Life would be a lot easier if we just assume geometry. But unlike you fundy religious hard morons, we don't assume the horizon is a physical geometric position until it's debunked by a black swan, resulting in your denial of the physical geometry and claiming it's optical. And yet another brilliant dodge by Nathan Jokely. Let me try and restate what I was saying so that maybe Nathan might be able to understand. So what I was saying is that there are better ways to measure the geometric horizon other than light, like radio waves. Now I am no expert in radio waves, so I can't tell you exactly the steps that you need to take to measure the geometric horizon using radio waves, but I can give a few pointers. So from my research, it appears that longer wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation appear to be less affected by refraction than the shorter wavelengths. This is actually how you manage to separate light using a prism. So because radio waves have a far longer wavelength than that of light, they are far less affected by refraction. Now there are other factors that do come into play, one of which I believe is Nathan's favourite, and that's diffraction. And whilst we're here Nathan, what is diffraction? Now if there were a flat earther who wanted to use radio waves to prove the shape of the earth, I'd highly recommend that they speak to someone with a lot more expertise in that field. You know, someone that would be able to tell you how to account for things like diffraction or any other effects that may occur. But the thing is, I don't think a flat earther will try to use radio waves to prove the earth is flat. And that was what my comment was about. You know, when was the last time that flat earthers tried to use somewhat sophisticated technology to prove that the earth was flat? How well did that go for them? But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Hello, it's me again, Nathan Hokey Cokey. Will you be my friend? Uh, I've got a link for you, ready? Plane or walk, oh no, that's you, isn't it? Sorry, but I've debunked you. Uh, checkmate, Fundy. We do not have a physical geriatric sphere, a, a geometric, G oh, how do you say that? Given your obvious demonstrations of your inability to read conspiracy cats allow me oh nathan sounds really excited now doesn't he it's like he knows that there's a point that no one's going to be able to dispute come on nathan let's hear it that would be a physical geometric sphere edge for your geometric globe model and he was right, that's why he was so excited, because he knew that he was going to be able to get something right for once. You know, he did actually say in that comment that there was a geriatric sphere. Fuck! I think it really says something about Nathan Oakley when he gets overly excited to correct something that was said in a joke. And you could tell that he was excited too, just by the way that he was saying it. Also, the sky is not a vacuum. Outer space, a sky vacuum, is a violation of the second law of thermodynamics, which I've proved numerous times. I only just barely know how to say, let alone explain. If the sky was a vacuum, the gas we breathe would fill the space. That was a quote from Wiggles, 2019. Wow. Any photo claimed to be taken from the sky vacuum is fake. Just like my belief in a flat earth. Well, no. As per the second law of thermodynamics, to quote Conspiracy Cats himself, Without the container, there can be no pressure, end quote. Or the second quote, without the balloon, there is no pressure. So it's an antecedent consequent relationship. There'd be an entropy increase. If the sky was the vacuum, the gas would indeed fill the space. Okay, here's a really important thing that I think Katz was trying to get at with those quotes. If I have a balloon, and inside that balloon there's pressure, and I go ahead and pop the balloon, what happens to the pressure inside of that balloon? Well, I hope that both myself and Nathan Oakley can agree that what would happen to the pressure inside of that balloon would disperse into the surrounding atmosphere. If Nathan agrees with that, then there's something that I bring up which we'll get to. If Nathan doesn't agree with that, 
then he's a fucking moron because that's the whole premise of why gas should fill a vacuum. So Nathan claims that outer space would be a violation of the second law of thermodynamics. So if the atmosphere wasn't held to earth by a container, then I would agree. But it is, that container is called gravity. Gravity is definitely not a container. If you're asserting that gravity has some sort of force over gas, you'd be incorrect. Gravity as a force was replaced by Einsteinian bending of conceptual mediums known as space-time around a hundred years ago. Gravity is definitely not a force. To quote Brian Cox, gravity is not really a force at all. To quote George Musa, gravity is not a force, but you can think of it as a force. So gravity is absolutely not in any way overcoming the second law of thermodynamics. If the sky was a vacuum, the gas would fill the space. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here, and one of my recent videos was asking Flat Earthers, why is gravity not actually a force? The reason why I ask this is because if we want to talk about Einsteinian gravity over Newtonian gravity, then it's very important that each person in the conversation actually understands Einsteinian gravity rather than saying, oh, it's not a force, so we can't use it as a force. And you've also got to explain why we can't treat it as a force as well. But even if it's not actually a force, it is still a fictitious force or a pseudo force, which means that it has the appearance of being a force whilst not actually being a force, which still means that things fall to the ground, so we can still say that it's a container. You know what could possibly be a violation of the second law of thermodynamics though? If there were a pressure gradient that was able to persist without a force. Planner Walk here choosing to attack a straw man by asking a question about delta x, gas pressure gradients, when the question we are asking in regards to the thermodynamics violation that is a sky vacuum is how can you have gas pressure, that would be x, without a container. Okay, let's go back a bit and remember what I said about the balloon. If I pop a balloon that has pressure inside of it, then the pressure inside of that balloon is going to disperse into the surrounding atmosphere. Now we know that there's a mechanism behind this. If you've got a contained system and you've got a high amount of pressure in one area and a low amount of pressure in another area, if there's no force acting upon those pressures, the high pressure will disperse until the system is homogeneous. Now when you've got a pressure gradient in the atmosphere that means that there's less pressure the higher up you go, that must mean that there's something acting on the atmosphere to keep that pressure gradient in place. And if there's something that's keeping the pressure gradient in place, who's to say that that can't keep the atmosphere in place? All horizons are by definition apparent. The geriatric, geomet... Oh, I hate that word. The word is geometric and is the premise of your heliocentric fantasy that you're on a sphere with physical sphere geometry. How very telling that you now hate this word. Nathan the joke police is back at it again. And I see that he really loves to repeat himself. In fact, I've had to cut bits out just because he was simply repeating himself. Physical globe horizon is based on the height of the observer. The globe model has a physical geriatric horizon. Say it with me in past tense. Had a physical geometric horizon. Now I know that this is really nitpicky, but Nathan has said some really stupid shit, so I think I get a free pass for nitpicking the really stupid point. So in the comment, Nathan says the globe model has a physical geometric horizon. In his voiceover, he's trying to say the globe model had a physical geometric horizon. That's Nathan Oakley debunked! Boom! And in reality, we only observe one, which varies. This is just, I'm just talking nonsense. It has fixed physical limits, blah, blah, blah. I'm just trying to claim that the horizon isn't a real place. Because that's what I do. I'm Nathan Crokey Pokey. And when we start talking about things that I don't understand, I just try and play word games to make it look like I'm not as stupid as what I really is. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not trying to claim the horizon's not a physical place. The fundies who talk to me who are on the globe side and understand the black swan argument are telling me that it's apparent. That still doesn't change the fact that you're trying to play word games, Nathan. Basically, what your argument is, is because the horizon in the black swan image is apparent, that means that no physical geometric horizon can exist. Whereas the actual argument being presented is, the horizon in the black swan image is apparent, so you are not seeing the physical geometric horizon. 
and all that blah 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 that you're saying is a load of old nonsense would be the physical geometry your sphere religion's based on. So we're definitely in agreement with the old blah 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 about physical sphere geometry. And notice how Nathan gets really excited to play word games. So he essentially proved Conspiracy Cats' point. So Nathan, are the shapes of the platforms that we see in that image apparent? Who cares, I'm not defending a geometric model and my arguments about the horizon. Holy fuck, that was one hell of a dodge. He wasn't even pretending not to dodge there. Does that debunk the actual geometric shape of the platforms? Your assertion that the apparent horizon is non-physical debunks the assertion we have a physical geometric horizon. All right, this is the moment that I have been waiting for. Time to test Nathan's logic out. So let's turn this into a syllogism. Premise one. If the horizon is apparent, then there cannot be any geometric horizon. Premise 2. The horizon in the black swan image is apparent. Conclusion. There cannot be any geometric horizon. And from what I can tell, this sums up Nathan Oakley's claim pretty well. And Nathan Oakley seems to think that this is good logic. It's not. If you can replace one of those words, let's say horizon, with, I don't know, let's say the oil rigs, does it still hold water? So premise one, if the oil rig is apparent, then there cannot be any geometric oil rig. Premise two, the oil rig in the black swan image is apparent. Conclusion, there cannot be any geometric oil rig. So based on that, you have to accept one of two conclusions. Either A, there is no geometric oil rig when it comes to the black swan image, or B, Nathan's logic is ridiculous. Because if you take an argument and you try to apply that argument to other things that it was not initially designed for, and that argument suddenly becomes ridiculous, maybe it's because it was always ridiculous. And that is the reason why I tried to ask Nathan if the shapes of the platforms in that image are apparent. Because if they are, then it exposes a big flaw in Nathan's logic. Now, it's surprising to see how many people in Nathan's comment section actually agree with him. Or people that think that I'm the crazy one because I have a tinfoil hat which I literally made to poke fun at conspiracy theorists. Or the people that somehow think that because I'm wearing a Lamb of God t-shirt that somehow my argument is invalid. And I think that just goes to show that a large portion of Nathan's audience just want an excuse to discredit the other side. And this is just reinforced by the fact that Nathan just constantly dodged the point and took jokes made by conspiracy cats and treated them as being serious. And that's fine, because Nathan, that just makes you look like an idiot. And most people in my audience at least have the intelligence to be able to see that.